In this video, we'll apply the WKB approximation and problems where we expect uh, tunneling effects to occur. These are cases where uh, the particle is able to cross a potential barrier that classically it wouldn't normally be able to. So, so far we've seen that in what's uh, sometimes called classically allowed regions, so where the energy of the particle is greater than the potential energy, the WKB solutions take on this form. And here we expect uh, oscillatory behavior of the solutions because you, you're dealing with complex exponentials. Here K is uh, defined as this and is related to, uh, if you wish, a, uh, a local De Broglie wavelength. In classically forbidden regions, so when the energy of the particle is less than the potential energy, so in the case where you have a potential barrier, the WKB solutions take on the following form where you're now dealing with uh, exponential increasing and decaying terms. And here this kappa is defined uh, by this quantity. And this type of behavior occurs, for example, when you have a finite potential barrier. So it can be a case like this. where our potential is given by some function of x plus v naught. This, uh, this function of x is this part over here that uh, differentiates this problem with the one of just a flat potential barrier. And uh, so this is between zero and L. So over here, we have x equals to zero and over here, x equals to L. And it's equal to zero otherwise. The total energy of our particle will consider it to be somewhere over here. And for this case, uh, this image is not to scale the potential barrier is going to be much, much higher than the total energy of the system. So we can separate this problem into three distinct regions. Uh, region one, where we have the energy is greater than the, than the potential. Region two, where the energy is smaller than the potential, because the potential is somewhere up here. And region three, where we again have the energy of the particle greater than the potential. And here we know that uh, a particle confined to region one can eventually find itself in region three by tunneling through this barrier. To avoid some of the uh, complications on the validity of the WKB approximation, we're going uh, to look at the case where uh, V naught is much, much larger than E. So the, the height of the barrier over here is much, much larger than the energy of the particle. And uh, the length of the barrier is very large. So this is a very, tall and very long potential barrier. And we uh, make these approximations so that this exponentially growing term in region two of our WKB solution is uh, essentially zero. Okay, so uh, the only term that we're left considering in region two is this exponentially decaying one. And this is true in general when uh, the barrier is so high and so long that we don't expect any appreciable contributions from this exponentially growing term. Okay, 
Okay, so what this means. is we expect our, our wave function in this forbidden region to take on the following form. So uh, in region one, we can expect uh, wave functions of the form uh, e to the i kx and another one of the form e to the minus i kx. This term over here uh, is uh, representing a particle that is traveling towards the barrier. And this term over here, the one with the b, corresponds to a particle that's been reflected from the barrier and is traveling in the opposite direction. And here, uh, K, because our potential is equal to zero in region one, this is just equal to the square root of two M times the energy of the particle. And this is uh, because V is equal to zero here. In region three, so in this region over here, uh, we can expect a wave function. So we'll denote this by three and this by one. A wave function of, the, of this form. And this corresponds to a particle that's been transmitted through the barrier and is now traveling in the positive x direction. This is a transmitted, a transmitted free particle, strictly speaking, because the potential is equal to zero in this region. In region two, in the forbidden region, we expect from our WKB solutions that the wave function uh, generally decays exponentially like this. Uh, so we won't put any normalization constant, we'll just say it's proportional integral from zero to L, so over the length of the barrier, this kappa X. This is from our WKB solution. Okay, so if we put all this together, we have our potential Baird over here. Region one, two, and three. Our total energy is somewhere there. So in region one, we expect a solution that's oscillating in some way, and it has some, uh, some potentially high probability of being in region one, because that's where it started from. In region three, we expect a comparatively uh, lower amplitude wave function, because the probability of finding a particle in this region is much smaller than finding it in this region. This is our amplitude F. This over here is our amplitude A. And in the forbidden region, we said that we expect some uh, exponentially decaying solution. And the reason I drew it like this is because uh, the wave function has to be continuous. Uh, so our wave function in 
region one when x is equal to zero, so at the beginning of the barrier. This has to match with our wave function in region two at that same position. Additionally, the uh, wave function in region two at the end of the barrier has to match with the wave function in region three at the end of the barrier. So these, uh, this connects the wave functions in the three regions. And what this means then is uh, if we consider the ratio of the amplitude of our wave function at this point over here, which we have called A, and the amplitude of our wave function at this point over here, which we have called F, Uh, this has to scale as uh, the amount that the amplitude has decayed over the span of the barrier. And that's related to how the wave function evolves in this barrier. So this is our psi two of X. when x is between uh, zero and L, so when we're inside of the barrier. This means that the probability of a particle uh, being transmitted through the barrier is related to the square modulus of the wave functions. So we'll call T W K B as the transmission coefficient or the probability of transmission according to our WKB approximation. Uh, sorry, this should be F and this should be A. This is the, the square modulus of the wave function in this region over the square modulus of the wave function in this region, which according to what we had here, is just the square modulus of this quantity, which means that we pick up an extra factor of two in the exponent. This is uh, this is our WKB estimate for the transmission coefficient, or equivalently, the probability of transmission uh, through this type of potential barrier. So, in the next video, we'll apply this result to. Uh, to calculate the transmission coefficient of uh, a potential barrier that has a flat top. So one that uh, you've seen before for the step potential. And we'll see that in uh, the corresponding limits in which we expect the WKB approximation to be valid, uh, our results will coincide with the exact results uh, previously uh, studied.